Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Anderson. Anderson, and you're watching freaking Jiggy Jag TV. Yeah. Well, it is Jiggy Jag TV out here at the soon-to-be world-famous Red Shed. I've been practicing that all, the, all week, by the way. And uh, we have got the fantastic Brandon Miller. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Pretty good, actually. Now that, now that you're sound-checked and everything and Twinkie made you sound like a million bucks. and That's why he gets paid the big bucks. <laughs> So, uh, talk to us a little bit about your background. How did you get started doing this music thing? You know, it uh, it all started with my my parents' love for music. Um, they, you know, even growing up as a child, they would, um, you know, be going to see concerts, whether it was the big shows or, you know, small clubs and bars around Kansas City. Yeah. Um, and I would dive into my dad's record collection all the time, and I'd find... You know, Led Zeppelin, Aerosmith, Rush, Genesis, all the classic rock, good stuff. And, uh, um, you know, it started from there, and my older brother had a guitar, and he played a little bit, um, kind of just played around the house and stuff. Um, and as a older brother would, he would get mad any time I would try to play the guitar and figure it out. And so uh, after, after months of that... Um, arguing in the house my parents decided to get me my first guitar for uh, Christmas when I was seven and uh, then uh, played for a couple years and ever since I turned 13 I'd been I had my first gig then and uh, been playing full-time ever since awesome yeah. awesome so uh, virtue and vice yes talk to me a little bit. virtue and vice is uh, my latest album uh, that we released in August of 2020, um, it's a, it's the best representation of me, my playing, uh, my songwriting, and my sound um, as a whole. I'm very proud of the album. Um, it combines, obviously, rock, my rock background, but it delves into the, the blues, a little country. Um, we really experimented with some textures, with different instrumentation. Um, you know, and we're we're really proud of that album. It's um, a lot of great songs on there, um, from you know lots of hard struggles that I went through in my own personal life, um, as well as you know your career in music and trying to get out there and hear people and uh, let them hear you. Um, and you know, it's it's kind of funny how it happened. We recorded it in January of 2020, and was expecting a uh, a May May or June release. And uh, all that stuff went down, and we were like, well, maybe we should delay it a couple months and everything will open back up, and that didn't happen. We were like, well, everything's paid for and printed up, so we might as well just let the music out. And uh, we got a great response from it, and uh, now that we're able to start playing more and get it out, we'll actually be able to play the music finally. Now, you were recently uh, on Daryl's house. Tell us a little bit about this. Yeah, um... My other band I play with full time is uh, the Danielle Nicole band, um, and she's an amazing uh, kind of blues soul roots singer, um, formerly of Trampled Underfoot out of Kansas City, um, and she's a multi blues music award winner um, for contemporary female artists for blues uh, bassist of the year, uh, amongst many others. She was also nominated for a Grammy for a contemporary blues album. Um, but I've been playing with her now for, we are in our 
seventh year um, playing together since she went solo, and we uh, recently were able to get back out. And, uh, yeah, we played at um, Daryl's House Club up in New York, which is an amazing little club, um, you know, just like the TV show. And uh, we, uh, we got to play there, and they have amazing sound and production um, and everything. Uh, and they, they did a live stream, so it goes to everybody around the world, to their whole audience and fan base. Um, and that's just, it's a lot of fun. It's a cool spot. Something I noticed when you were sound checking and setting up is you have like one of those like drummer cages, but you have it around your PA setup. I do. Uh, I've, I've had those, um, the guitar shields or baffles, you know, they have different terminology, but, um, the guitar shield, I've been using those for probably the last decade, at least, if not longer. Um, it helps me be able to turn up the tube amps loud enough to where they get the sound that I want to without blowing out the people sitting out in the front row and stuff. Um, but yeah, It's always good. It is always good. I want them to enjoy the concert too. And uh, sound guys appreciate it when I let them control the sound of the guitar instead of me. So um, I actually first saw Kenny Wayne Shepherd at the Cotillion in Wichita back in 2006 probably um and i noticed that he did the same thing and he had a bunch of old fender twins um you know cranked up but you put that shield in front of it and just kind of diffuses the sound elsewhere and um so yeah that's i've been carrying them ever since for not only my safety but everyone else's too now you're also a gear guy you love collecting musical gear i do uh i noticed you have the uh and I'm sure that there's a technical term for it, but I'm basically an idiot. So I'm going to refer to it as the Peter Frampton thing. You have that on your... I do. I do. I've, uh, I've had the talk box for a very yes. long time. Um, and that's something going back to probably my middle school days um, of playing in different cover bands around Kansas City. Um, for some reason, I hadn't seen anybody on the local scene using a talk box much, yeah. but was always a huge Peter Frampton fan and uh I ended up finding one and you know you do a couple Peter Frampton songs and then everywhere you go everybody's like hey you're the kid that plays Peter Frampton and uh you know fast forward uh to today and they still uh they still want to hear Peter Frampton everywhere I go so I love Peter Frampton (laughs) so yeah definitely definitely a lot of gear uh we bring and stuff but you know it's what else can we do so tell me about some of the other people in your band uh, Dylan Ryder is on bass guitar and vocals. Uh, he has been with me for, let's see, this is our eighth year playing together. Um, great bass player, always been solid. He really fills out the, the idea of a three-piece kind of power trio in a bass player. Um, fills up the space when needed and gets out of the way when is also necessary. Um, and then, uh, you know, Go-Go Ray on the drums is a powerhouse drummer um amazing drummer um just rock solid and he's he does he does that very well where he will you know he stays in his lane when we need to let him rev it up and let loose he'll do it but he's fine just staying in his lane awesome yeah so before we let you go how do we find you on social media buy your album everything yeah the best place is uh my website brandonmillerkc.com um, and then all the social medias, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, or whatever social media I discover next, um, is at Brandon Miller KC. So just Brandon Miller KC anywhere, and uh, you should be able to find me. One more thing before I let you go. I noticed that you were wa- walking around the venue here and checking this place out. Yeah. What do you think of this place? It's a special place. You know, you walk in and you look at it, and you're just like, Yep, it's got a vibe and it's got an atmosphere, you know. And the more people start to roll in, it's only, it's only gonna get more fun from here. That's awesome. Yeah, That's awesome. really looking forward to it. Well, uh, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Thanks for doing this, and uh, thanks for watching Jiggy Jag TV. Thank you.
backs against the wall Tell you see to in the world.